John Green ist schon vorgestellt worden und ich entnehme dem Applaus, dass man ihn auch nicht großartig noch mal vorstellen muss, einer der erfolgreichsten Jugendbuchautoren unserer Tage. Das neue Buch, um das es heute Abend geht, ist eigentlich mehr als ein Jugendbuch, vielleicht waren es seine früheren auch schon. Bei diesem hier bin ich mir ganz sicher, das Schicksal ist ein mieser Verräter, ist ein Buch eigentlich für alle Altersklassen, weil es ein Buch ist, in dem es um die großen Fragen des Lebens geht, um die Fragen von Leben und Tod, aber auf eine Weise, die ganz ungewöhnlich, ganz charmant und ganz toll ist und die sicherlich deswegen das Buch über das, was man normalerweise als Jugendliteratur vielleicht bezeichnen könnte, wo die Erwachsenen sagen, naja, ist nichts für uns, weit hinaushiebt. I think now it's the time that we should get an impression of what this tone sounds like and I would just like you to read a certain part of chapter number one, and you will all soon find out that this is not only a book about cancer. So Hazel and Augustus are in this uh, support group for kids with cancer that's um, the, the leader of this group, the only adult in the room, is this guy Patrick who had testicular, I don't know, you guys are just, you just like Patrick, a bunch of <laughs> Patrick fans? He had testicular cancer and um, He recovered and she's very resentful of him. And there's a new boy in support group and he is staring at Hazel. I pulled out my phone and clicked it so it would display the time, 4.59. The circle filled in with the unlucky 12 to 18s and then Patrick started us out with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. The guy was still staring at me. I felt rather blushy. Finally, I decided the proper strategy was to stare back. Boys don't have a monopoly on the staring business, after all. So I looked him over as Patrick acknowledged for the thousandth time his ballessness, etc. And soon it was a staring contest. After a while, the boy smiled. And then finally, his blue eyes glanced away. When he looked back at me, I flicked my eyebrows up to say, I win. He shrugged. Patrick continued, and then finally, it was time for the introductions. Isaac, perhaps you'd like to go first today. I know you're facing a challenging time. Yeah, Isaac said. I'm Isaac, I'm 17, and it's looking like I have to get surgery in a couple weeks, after which I'll be blind. Not to complain or anything, because I know a lot of us have it worse, but yeah, I mean, being blind does sort of suck. My girlfriend helps, though, and friends like Augustus. He nodded toward the boy, who now had a name. There were five others before they got to him. He smiled a little when his turn came. His voice was low, smoky, and dead sexy. My name's Augustus Waters, he said. I'm 17. I had a little touch of osteosarcoma about a year and a half ago, but I'm just here today at Isaac's request. And how are you feeling? Patrick asked. Oh, I'm grand. Augustus Waters smiled with the corner of his mouth. I'm on a roller coaster that only goes up, my friend. When it was my turn, I said, my name is Hazel, I'm 16, thyroid with Mets in my lungs, and I'm okay. I looked over at Augustus Waters, who looked back at me, You could almost see through his eyes, they were so blue. There will come a time, I said, when all of us are dead, all of us. There will come a time when, no human being, when there are no human beings remaining to remember that anyone ever existed or that our species ever did anything. There will be no one left to remember Aristotle or Cleopatra, let alone you. Everything that we did and built and wrote and thought and discovered will be forgotten, and all of this will have been for naught. We're going to skip ahead to Hazel and Augustus talking. Um, Hazel walks, Augustus walks up to Hazel in the church. Literally, he said. Literally? 
I asked. We are literally in the heart of Jesus, he said. I thought we were in the basement of a church, but we are literally in the heart of Jesus. Someone should tell Jesus, I said. I mean, it's got to be dangerous storing children with cancer in your heart. I would tell him myself, Augustus said, but unfortunately, I am literally stuck inside of his heart, so he wouldn't be able to hear me. I laughed. He shook his head, just looking at me. What? I asked. Nothing, he said. Why are you looking at me like that? Augustus half smiled. Because you're beautiful. I enjoy looking at beautiful people, and I decided a while ago not to deny myself the simpler pleasures of existence. A brief, awkward silence ensued, but Augustus plowed through. I mean, particularly given that, as you so deliciously pointed out, all of this will end in oblivion and everything. I kind of scoffed or exhaled in a way that was vaguely coffee, and then said, I'm not beautiful. You're like a millennial Natalie Portman, like V for Vendetta Natalie Portman. Never seen it, I said. Really? He asked. Pixie-haired, gorgeous girl, dislikes authority, and can't help but fall for a boy she knows is trouble? It's your autobiography, so far as I can tell. That's what I'm going to read. Thank you.